Let's say you want to start tailoring your own clothes and you want to buy a sewing machine, but you have no idea where to look. Don't worry, I got you. I'm SD and if you're new and you're really, really tired of wearing clothes that don't fit you very well anymore, bro, you are in the right place because I show you how to tailor everything in your closet. And since you have no idea what it is that you're looking for in a sewing machine, what's the first thing that you should look for? Well, you want a machine that's going to let you control and dictate what type of stitch that you want to make, how long you want that stitch to be, and how wide. And 99.9% .9 of all mass-produced sewing machines made in the last about 100 years can do just that. That's because the basic principles of every single sewing machine made in the last 100 years really hasn't changed all that much. They all ask you those same three questions. What type of stitch do you want to make? How long do you want that stitch to be? And how wide? So that means yes, you can bust out your phone right now and find a sewing machine that will allow you to tailor your own clothes very, very easily at Target.com or Amazon or eBay. I made a video where we did some online shopping for a sewing machine and it was right when everybody was making masks. Let me tell you, those things were so ridiculously overpriced, it was insane. But luckily, all the manufacturers came in and said, okay, well, we're gonna start making masks. And then all those people that bought those sewing machines, well, they don't need them anymore because they're not tailoring their own clothes. So uh, yeah, Facebook Marketplace or anything like that, you'll get a great deal. Another question you want to ask yourself, do you want your sewing machine to do anything else or not so much? Because since sewing machines are very versatile tools and can do a lot of different things, that's great and that's fine if you wanted to, but if you just want to use it to tailor your own clothes, well then just look for something made by Singer or by Brother or by Janome, Bernina, Husqvarna. I have to throw in a Leif Erikson reference every single time I say Husqvarna. Charg farg, happy Leif Erikson day, charg farg. This seems really easy and straightforward. There has to be a catch somewhere, right? Yes, there is. Let's start with this one. Portable sewing machines. Portable sewing machines are those ones that you can find on eBay for, let's say, $20, maybe $30. Are those machines any good? Yes but actually no. That's because they can do some basic things, some overall basic tailoring that's fine, that's not a big deal, but there's gonna be little details that you don't think about with those portable sewing machines that they can't do. For instance, a lot of them can't make a back stitch, so you'll have to work around that. Um, a lot of them can't make a zigzag stitch, and a lot of them don't have very powerful motors in them, so you can get away with tailoring your t-shirts and your dress shirts, but anything past that, it's not gonna like you at all. Another quick point is as far as the price goes and as far as the price goes for overall sewing machines, those portable sewing machines, they're like $30. So for an extra $20, you can get full-sized used machines. So it's like, just, just don't bother. Speaking of used sewing machines and price, if you look hard enough, first and foremost, you can probably find a sewing machine for free. Because what happens is someone in the family who used that sewing machine for a very long time, well, they pass away. Nobody else knows how to use that sewing machine, nor do they really care, so they'll probably give it to you for free. And if you have to pay for that used sewing machine, you can find a great sewing machine anywhere between $40 to $80, no problem. But hang on, there's a downside to buying a used sewing machine that not a lot of people think about or ever bring up, and I don't see really a lot of other channels bringing it up. It's the fact that the machine in and of itself might be fine, but you're probably not gonna get the accessories that you need. So you're probably not gonna get extra empty bobbins or needles or the manual or anything like that, which isn't the end of the world, but it's still a thing. So if you have to diagnose that sewing machine for some reason, you don't have the manual, so you gotta just try and figure it out online. Those accessories aren't expensive by any means, but depending on the manufacturer of your sewing machine, there's a chance that they went out of business and they just don't make accessories for them anymore. You can find some universal accessories for that machine, but it might not be as good. You might get a used sewing machine that was very well taken care of and will work for you fantastically. Or you might not. You might get a piece of junk that doesn't work very well at all. The stitch tension just doesn't handle its job anymore and you kind of want to just throw it at the wall. But wait, you skipped over new sewing machines. Well, no, I didn't. That was deliberate. I don't want you to go buy a new sewing machine because what ends up happening is someone spends 
$150 or $100 on a brand new sewing machine and they don't they don't really like doing this they're not a fan of it so then it just sits there and collects dust this is one of the easiest cheapest most life-changing hobbies you can pick up but don't don't dive deep into it just start off with a super cheap used sewing machine upgrade later down the road if you want to it's your call that's all I got for you SD out see ya